These are selected scenes from the 70 minute long Building a Chopper Chassis DVD. Check out all the Cobell DVDs at cobell.biz. Hi, I'm Ron Covell. Today we're going to build a chopper frame. So let's take a look at some of the design elements that go into making a motorcycle frame. The rake is the amount of angle that the fork has to it. And part of the chopper look usually involves accentuation of the rake. Another concept is trail, and that's just a little more difficult to define. If you draw a line through the bearings of the fork, that line will touch the ground at some point and that point is always ahead of the point where the tire touches the ground. The distance between those points is the amount of trail that you have. And four to six inches is a good range to shoot for. With six inches being better for a bike that's designed for highway travel without a lot of maneuvering, whereas four inches of trail might be better for a bike that you want to do a lot of low speed maneuvering with. Your fork design will determine the amount of trail you have and special offset trees are available to help adjust trail if a standard tree would give you too much or too little. For Springer front ends, the rocker can be changed to give you more or less trail. So let's talk about the frame we're going to build today. It's going to be a simple design. It's a hardtail frame. It has no rear suspension. We're building it with sensible width tires so the frame doesn't have to balloon out around the tires. It's a twin down tube design and let's just go through the steps to build this frame. So the first step is to make a layout mark 10 inches from the end of the tube and I'll show you how this is set up in the machine. So there's our bend I think you can see it's a very nicely formed bend. Very uniform, very smooth. There's almost no ovalizing at all of the tubing. It's come up very nicely. We're going to use our fixture to hold the first three pieces of tubing together. There's an attachment that goes on this that centers the backbone in the fixture. So we'll put that into place. We'll put the backbone against this part of the fixture. We'll just hold it with spring clamps and then the rear wishbone section goes in the cradle. This cradle is designed so that the elements that are vertical are 10 and 7 8 inches apart, which is the actual finished dimension of the chassis. So we'll hold this to the fixture, to the cradle with clamps. And now we can look at how these pieces of tubing fit together. Now where we're going with this is that the wishbone needs to be notched in such a way that it's a very snug fit against the backbone. And I'll show you a couple of different ways to do that. Okay. Let's try it again. Hey, looks like we've got a real good fit. So after about a half an hour, and about 10 trial fittings and about six sandpaper drums, we finally have gotten a very, very nice fit on this piece of tubing. The piece we hand fit rivals the piece we cut with the milling machine. Of course, it's taken much longer, but if you don't have a mill, this is an excellent way to get a super fitting joint. So here's the first segment of our motorcycle frame tack welded together. So what we need to do is to get the miter cut at the front of this tube and then we need to cut the slots that go over the rear axle plates. So we have the axle plates positioned on the fixture now. So we'll do the first test fitting of the upper level of the chassis. Make sure those notches engage the plates. And by gosh, it looks great. Okay, this is our third test fitting. We should be getting close now. We'll put the down tube back in the cradle. And by gosh, we have a perfect fit. 
at the joint between the down tube and the backbone. This is the part of the job that's most gratifying for me. Now all of the metal fabrication is done on the frame and the fork. We start assembling the components and it becomes a motorcycle for the first time. A couple of things I should have mentioned earlier. When you're buying tubing for your motorcycle frame, buy a fair amount of extra tubing because you really can't expect perfection with each cut and each bend. Another thing is when you're making the final welds on the motorcycle frame, don't weld any one joint all at one time. Make a small weld in one area, skip to another area, and keep skipping around until your welding is completed. That will minimize the distortion. So I think you'll get a great deal of satisfaction when you finish your motorcycle project, and I encourage you to get started. Learn metalworking and welding from a master, Covell DVDs, the standard of the industry.